Kurabu donk, Kurabu donk, Kurabu donk. Okay, here we are again for um, the Thomas Edmonds take on the Chamber of Secrets slash Harry Potter. And um, so last time we kind of covered the setup of the series as a whole, because not that much happens in the first book, especially in terms of like the greater narrative of Harry Potter. Yeah. Um, but I think more does kind of happen and start to get set up in number two, Chambers of Secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is what we want, because it's a very long series, you know? It's like, if you didn't have, like, a bit of um, foreshadowing and, like, flashbacking and blah, 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 <clears throat> it wouldn't be fun. I did realize actually going through each book, like she really pointedly like reconfirms details quite a lot, like yeah, character descriptions and like the ceiling in the great hall and like yeah, every book you're kind of reintroduced to a bunch of stuff. Yeah, even and Harry Potter. Harry yeah. Potter is not like other boys of age. <laughs> It's like, what? I thought he was just a normal guy. Like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Oh, yeah. Just the same stuff. And often she says it, like, exactly the same, you know? Yeah. Like, she doesn't try to, like, describe it in a different way because she's written it even, like, five times before or something. She just is like, well, I'll stick with that. <laughs> <laughs> what is the kids? I mean, like, may, it might be yeah. a thing that's like, um, you know, programming it into the kids in a certain way or something, like do it the exact way. Well, I guess when you're writing them, you know, like they would have come out like at least a year or so apart, right? So like, if you're thinking of that, then you would want to like remind kids I mean, she didn't think it was going to become one of the, like, classic series that everyone reads. And criticises. For decades. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely, um, there was, like, at least a few years between the ones that were coming out when I was <clears throat> already reading them. It's like that with anime, too. Like, it's like people would have been watching it, like, once a week, not, like, five episodes yeah. in a day. <laughs> so it's, <Yeah>. like, <laughs> recapping it every time. And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when? Yeah, um, I also quite like noticed and maybe enjoyed like the um the really like regular rhythm. Like every book starts back at the Dursleys and it's like yeah. what's gonna happen this summer? Something usually something happens, like he has some yeah. kind of like contact with the wizarding world or goes back to like I don't know, you know, like the borough or like runs away or whatever. Yeah, usually not. I mean, like, something happens this summer, but there's, like, this is the one where he has no wizarding contact. Oh, yeah, because like, Dobby's taking all the... Dobby's being a bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of, like, even didn't quite remember some details like that and reading it, and I was like, oh, yeah, Dobby's taking all the letters and shit. Yeah, there's definitely some stuff in rereading them that, like... I'm reading along with it and I know something's up with like this or that, but I'm like, what is that? Like something's happening here. Yeah. But I don't remember what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like some of that stuff too, that like Dobby's like fucking with his broom and shit. And I was like, oh, who's doing yeah. that again? You know? And it was Dobby again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody Dobby. <laughs> Bloody Dobby. This is obviously Dobby's first, like, you know, outing. This really outing. Made Dobby. <laughs> yeah. Which is new. I think also this is, I mean, I might be wrong, but I think this is the first time there's anything about the Whomping Willow. Yeah. I don't 
I don't think it's even mentioned in the first one. I don't think so either. And I I, I think I was looking out for it when I was reading the first one because I was like curious to see how much it was foreshadowed before the third one. I don't think it is though. Nah, I think it just came up as part of that, um, the car storyline. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think Dobby is kind of like one of the um, first, like, I don't know, like, deepening, like, plots that deepens the Wizarding world, you know? Like, it's like, there's specific things that Wizarding families have, like, rich Wizarding families have, or, like, whatever. And then he goes to the burrow, too, right? Because they come and get him. Yeah, this is the first burrow outing as well. (laughs) Oh, yeah, and they put put the bars on his window and locked him in his room, eh? (laughs) Oh fuck, they! That shit is crazy. Yeah, they're like putting his meals through the trap door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like fuck you, you're not going anywhere. It's crazy. He's twelve. Like <laughs> that's yeah. insane. This is also the first time he goes by flu powder. Oh yeah. Is this the one where he goes to Nocturne Alley by mistake? I think, I think that- it must be. Because that's the first time he uses blue powder. Yeah. Because they go all together to get the um, books and shit, and then he fucks it up because yeah, yeah, he's maybe. coughing on the blue powder. And what is uh, he getting? Oh, yeah, because then there's, like, the fight between um, Malfoy's dad and Mr. Weasley. And yeah. he, like, slips Jenny the book. Yeah. The journal. I was so, like, aware of that when I read that scene, because it's like he picks up one of Ginny's books and he's like, oh, second hand, blah, 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 and then puts it back in, like, her cauldron, and I was like, oh, my gosh, that's it. It's so, like, it's weird, though, because, like, before she really gets possessed by it or anything, like, why isn't she, like, why is this fucking old journal in my cauldron, you know? Yeah. I think she thinks, I think she explains that, doesn't she? Because there's a whole bit when everything gets revealed where they're talking about how, like, Mr. Weasley has always said their whole life that you never trust anything where you can't see where its brain is. Yeah. And she was like, I didn't think it, I just thought it was, like, someone's old diary that came in the secondhand book, you know? Like, I didn't think anything about it. But it's like, if you find a book that writes back to you, like, responds to you, I don't know. I guess she's 11, you know. She's really little. But still, wouldn't you be like, what's up with that? And mention it to, like, anyone? Yeah, I don't know. Why? I don't really know why she's writing in it in the first place. But also, like, I was kind of, like, impressed that there was that much foreshadowing of, like, the... Well, I don't know if it was really planned, but it seems like it was that, like, Malfoy was that connected with Voldemort and, like, that he had, <clears throat> like, had his journal. And also that that was, like, the first Horcrux. Yeah. What is his motivation? I think one, I th- I think he didn't know, obviously he didn't know it was a Horcrux, but I didn't think he really thought that much of it. I think he thought it was like a dark object and they were doing those raids. The ministry was like raiding people about like yeah, looking right. for like dark objects and like he was trying to like get rid of shit. And he, I think he was trying to frame the Weasleys so that to, to discredit them so that they, right. even if they raided his, his shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, something like that. That makes sense. Yeah. I guess. Um, yeah, this one also, like, foreshadows all the stuff that happens in Six with, like, the Borgen and Burke stuff. Yes. You know? Because he, like, goes there and he hides in the banishing cabinet. Yeah. And he sees the necklace and stuff. Which, which is, is funny crazy. that... He doesn't vanish. I know. But do you maybe you have to like do a spell 
inside the cabinet or something. Nah, because in the fifth one or whatever, they shut the other, like, the Slytherin Quidditch yeah, team yeah. captain in there and he just disappears. But it was broken, right, the other one. So maybe, I don't know. Yes. Not, not yeah, too I think bad. That's probably... But the cursed locket was in there. Oh, it was a different locket. The... No, the cursed necklace is there. Yeah, but it's not the whole he sees it. Yeah. yeah. No, not the Horcrux, the... Um... Katie Bell one. Um, By the way, how cool is that thing that like only shows light for the holder, the person who holds it, that hand? Yeah, that's really cool. That's real buzzy because that crops back up in the sixth one, and like they, um, they drop the like Peruvian instant darkness powder or whatever. <laughs> but then Malfoy can see because he's like got that. It's like eerie. That's real buzzy that like. I don't know. I haven't it's quite that bit. Don't spoil it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, what happens next? They go to Flourish and Blots. Oh, also, it's like the first trip to the burrow, right? Before that. Yeah. And, like, they come and bust him out of his room and then run away from the Dursleys, lol, and, like... um. Yeah, like, so a lot of that stuff is, like, expanding the magical world. Like, obviously we knew yeah. Ron had a family and, like, but then there's, like, the flying car and, like, all the stuff about Mr. Weekly's obsession with muggles and shit. <laughs> Which is so entertaining, eh? <laughs> yeah. It's a really good um, running joke. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say something. Oh, yeah, this is the first one where, like, I don't know, it, the injustices that happened to Harry and stuff just always made me so mad. So, like, you know, when he gets, like, told off for um, Dobby doing magic? Yeah. Like, detect Dobby doing magic at Four Private Drive. And yeah. they're like, you! And I was like, that's so unfair. How can they not tell what Well, that's, done? like and what is done by elf magic you know well that's like one of the big inconsistencies for me i think because there's like seems to be like two kind of things happening there like they say that it's like it's only um they can only tell that magic was being done somewhere yeah. and then they just have to guess like that it was someone underage because like they're like muggle born and shit but then like they no one but then it's like the um what's it called? Like the thing the trace is like attached yeah. to you, like when you're under seventeen. So it's like It doesn't make any sense. I think it's like there's like a bit of a hole there. Like because yeah. it also like nothing would really stop Fred and George and like whatever everyone from like doing magic because they were like oh it's just molly doing some weird like experimental yeah. jokes or whatever <laughs> it's just her secret vibe yeah because also then surely it would pick up like oh i guess in the third one harry does get really worried that he's gonna be expelled for blowing up his aunt but i was gonna say like then it would be picking up all unintentional magic by children yeah you know but and they know exactly what it was um, maybe that's how i find muggleborns though you know maybe but yeah how well, does that find them. <laughs> well i guess so yeah 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 i'm not sure how that works like i don't know yeah i guess it must be just attached to everyone with magic under 17 it's pretty hazy though like how did you how would you like code that like spell or whatever you yeah. know like <laughs> how do you like set the specifics of this spell so it's like picking up all bodies that are under 17 that have magic yeah it doesn't really make sense eh? But yeah, when like when he blows up his aunt and like 
they know everything about it and they know that it was like a hovering charm and shit that dobby was doing but then they don't get the details of who's doing that it's like a bit retarded like why wouldn't they yeah it doesn't make any sense really i don't know because also like harry could go off to like um diagon alley or whatever and just be doing magic and shit and no one would know. I think there's some other instance where he's like, yeah. Like, who would I know mean, that he was doing the Patronus when he saves Dudley in, like, the fifth one or whatever? What do you mean, who would know? Well, like, he wasn't at home. Yeah. I mean, there's... It's, it, it's very inconsistent. Okay. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> what doesn't make any sense, does it? Um, I was going to say something else. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, you can say something else. No, I can't remember what it was now. Um, so, what's his name? The new defense the against the dark arts, arts teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is it? Gilderoy Lockhart. Yeah, Gilderoy Lockhart. Lockhart. Really good name. Oh yeah. Um, you know this curse that like means that um no one can stay longer than a year in that role. Yeah. But then I'm pretty sure that like they imply that Quirrell was there for like a few years or something. Yeah, there's no mention of you know like Harry's always thinking it and like him and Ron and Hermione talk about like in the sixth one they're like oh well hopefully Snape will leave at the end of the year because nobody's lasted more than a year but they never talk to anyone else about it like the twins or anything so oh, yeah. there's no yeah. mention of if those kids or like Bill or Charlie or anything also only had their teachers for one year yeah but like Later on, there's this bit where, like, Voldemort's talking about how he, like, found Quirrell and it was super convenient because he was the defense against the Dark Arts teacher. And it sounds like... Oh, no, no, Barty's talking about it. Barty Crouch Jr. is talking about it. And, Mm. like, he's saying that, like... Yeah, whatever. But it's, like, implied that he was already the teacher and then he found him and then, like... Yeah. But then, like... The curse couldn't be, you know, like the curse dies with you. And so, like, once Voldemort had, like, died and was not, like, a physical form, and then once he'd, like, attached himself to Quirrell, I don't know. How else would it make any sense, you know? Sounds a bit far fetched to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's so many holes that it's like, I'm like reaching to explain them, but. Who made the curse? Was it Snape or Voldemort? Voldemort, right? Because he doesn't get the job. Was he going for defense against the Dark Arts? I think so. He's huh. like, he didn't get the job, so he's like, well, fuck you. Oh, yeah. You will never have a good teacher for more than a year um if at all yeah (laughs) Lockhart is such a joke though and like I was actually kind of thought it was a bit unrealistic how like Hermione's like so swooning after him when like he's obviously a fucking crock of shit and like (laughs) I reckon eh? a like there's no I don't know like maybe you can justify her being a bit swoony if she's like just read his books and that's all but then once they meet him and have their first lesson with him and he's obviously fucking terrible at all magic you know surely she'd be like hmm yeah because she's so like i mean she obviously cares so much about doing well and being proficient and shit yeah yeah and they like don't learn anything from him not. Like, they probably learn less from him than they do from Umbridge, you know? They just read the book in her class. They don't even talk about it. Yeah, I know. It's so funny. <laughs> and she's like, 
No, no, I think you'll be able to pass your exams just with the theoretical knowledge. <laughs> yeah, one of the students, I think it's like one at Pavati or something, and she's like, so the first time we're going to be doing those spells is when we have our owl for practical defense against the dark arts. And she's like, yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, I think there's quite a few, like, kind of, like, tacky gendered things throughout the books like that, like, girls I'm are like this and noticing it because i'm reading the sixth one now which is the one where they start like dating and stuff yeah. and like the amount of times harry's like oh there's a silly group of girls this like giggling you know like he becomes um quidditch captain and he's like on oh, the stupid group of girls that couldn't even fly and just fell laughing on the ground blah 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 and it's like fuck man okay (laughs) (laughs) yeah but there's like heaps of stuff like it's it's really clear that he mostly tries not to cry for example and there's like there's like one or two times where he like finally cries and like most of the time him and ron are both just like (laughs) going but there's heaps of stuff too like yeah like like Hermione and also Ron's mom being like, oh my god, Gilderoy Lockhart and shit. Yeah. But like, you know, like, the women being really good at the cooking spells and like, I don't know, there's a thing, there's someone's mom or something is like, yeah, I, n- I never really got that good at the housework spells. Like, housework spells is like a whole branch of magic like, yeah. for, for women, kind of. Yeah. And like, the women. Mrs. Weasley's just, like, at home the whole time doing, like, cooking spells and shit. Yeah. I mean, you know, I guess for ages she was raising, like, seven children. But then, like, they're all at school. Yeah. All year, pretty much. Yeah. What is she up to? There's no, like, mention of what she does. If she does anything, you know. It's just, like, whatever. She doesn't need to be, like, a rounded character. <laughs> I guess the teachers are not like that, like, McGonagall and shit. They're kind of, like, they're, like, formidable and shit. Yeah, but McGonagall's kind of, like, a trope of, like, an old spinster, you know? Yeah. So, like, like she's, like, the crone or whatever. Um, I think this is also the first book where anyone gets called a mudblood yes it starts going in that direction getting the slows out yeah and like malfoy really starts to show his like leaning towards like that world and shit like in the first one he's just kind of a dick yeah but like in the second one it actually starts to be like oh actually something's going on there he's like invested in it yeah, and it starts to hint that, like, that world is still there slash might make a return at yeah. some point. <laughs> um, I liked the death day party in this one. I thought is that, that in that one? Cool. Yeah. Because they, yeah, I mean, I'm just flipping through the chapter titles now. And it's all it. right. I just think it's another one of those, like, cool things that the movie obviously cuts out of like the depth of it like you know like you really learn more about nearly headless nick rather than just like this comical figure who like pulls his head off at dinner yeah you know like you learn more about he's like not allowed to be in the headless hunt because yeah. he's not really headless and shit and like yeah there's a bit um, more of like culture and law in there even though it's a bit weak like yeah, this is also where you learn that Filch is a squib. Oh yeah, squibs so come up in that book. Quick spell thing in his office, and then Filch comes back and is like, "Were you just looking at that?" And he's like, "No, no." <laughs> okay, I was actually going to talk about Filch last time because, like, <laughs> why is he there? Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't really do anything there's no No, reason for the person for the caretaking to be done without magic (laughs) like well it's like explain later that all the actual like caretaking like janitorial stuff is done by house elves so it's like 
what the fuck does he do apart from like shout at children, you know, and like grump around? Yeah, complain and like fantasize about torturing children. <laughs> I, I wish I could hang you from your ankles. <laughs> like, all right, bro. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just like Dumbledore's pity. <laughs> it's like, okay, you can like hang around. <laughs> But why and how? Like, I'm like, how did that come up? Because, yeah, like, they've got all the work being done by house elves who can obviously do it, like, instantly. But then he's there, like, complaining to Harry about, like, oh, you're walking mud through the wall. (laughs) I don't think you're not doing that. I guess... Well, he obviously is, though, because there's, like, bits where he's, like, um, mopping shit up or, like, you know, there's heaps of instances of him having to actually deal with shit. Well, I guess, like, in the fourth one, it's talked about that, like, the house elves only do stuff at night because they can't be seen, you know? Like, the staff don't want them to be seen, which is why, I guess, that's just, like, explaining why you've never seen a house elf at Hogwarts before. Yeah. It's just, like, daytime caretaker. (laughs) Well, I guess also his role, his character was set up in the first one before she really yeah. brought in the yes. house elves. <laughs> yeah, this one I really thought, like I knew while I was reading it that all the people are stunned and not dead. But when I read when his cat gets got, which is like the first one, I was like, fuck the cat dies that's so crazy and was like it doesn't die i know (laughs) (laughs) i I was like convinced she died though oh when this time or the first time this time (laughs) okay okay so we are (laughs) i actually like stopped and was like oh is she just like not in any of the other books and then immediately it's like they're like felt shut up. She's just stunned. She's not dead. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> How amazingly lucky is it that every single person like <laughs> happens to see it through it's a reflection? So Even though last time <laughs> everyone died, like there were deaths like in the school, right? I think there's just, I think it was just Moaning Myrtle, wasn't it? Oh, so maybe it, that's the norm with the Basilisk shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's really hard to get them direct in the eye. <laughs> it's so, like, absurd, eh? Like, the first couple, whatever, and it's like three or four, and you're like... More stunnings, more petrifications. <laughs> and it's so, like... I don't know. It's one of those stories where, like, obviously it's set up for itself to, like, work itself out, you know? But, like, the first stunning happens and they're like, oh, good thing everyone's working on mandrakes at the moment. Like, that's what they used for. And it's like, oh, wow. Super convenient, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, oi, that's one thing about these, like, classes and shit. They seem to work on one thing for a very long time. So it's like, how do they ever learn anything? It's like they only learned about mandrakes for like half a year in herbology. And then it's like, hey, so maybe they learned about two things that year. (laughs) I'm just, in the sixth one, they're doing something with this like stump where they have to get the like seed pod out of it and it bites back, whatever. But Harry's like you know, the stumpers waiting on their table, which was their project for the term. And then over the course of that lesson, they get the seed pods out and burst the seed pods. And it's like, how could this possibly be a term's worth of information? (laughs) It's one plant. Do you leave Hogwarts knowing about like 30 plants maybe? That's not enough. (laughs) I don't know, bro, but, like, a lot of them seem to be like that. Like, they're, they're like, working on, like, one charm for, like, weeks on it, and then they're, they're, like, in Magical Creatures, they're, like, working on, like, one animal for, like, weeks on it. They do flubberworms for the whole year! Forever! (laughs) The whole year! They don't even do anything, and then it turns out that they start dying because they're only being fed lettuce. (laughs) 
No, the Bastien's groups die because they're eating each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the flubber worms. Oh, I don't remember that. That's in the what third one. Oh. Because he does, like, the... um. He does the hippogriffs once, and then he gets in trouble. So he's like, "Oh, I better do something yeah. easy, like flubber worms." Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Hagrid, he's such a good character. This is obviously also the first book where, oh, yeah, it's like revealed that parcel mouth is a thing, right? Yes, but he had talked to the snake before in, in the, the first, first book. Yeah, at the zoo. Yeah, but he doesn't say anything about it. And that's another one of those instances where he's just, like, so clueless, you know? Mm. Um, Oh, yeah, the flying car. Yeah. Reading through that again, I was like, that is just so unrealistic. Like, the parents are going to come back in, Mm. like, five Mm. minutes when the train leaves. There's, like, absolutely no reason for them to fly to Hogwarts and also they get there at the same time as the train because they're like watching it and then they crash and shit but then they're like really late for the feast and then the feast's already over by the time they've finished getting told off by Snape it's like what was happening (laughs) yeah nothing time moves differently when you're in the Whomping Willow it's (laughs) But the car thing itself, too, is, like, that is just retarded. Like, why would you go, I've got to take the car? And also, why can he drive? Yeah, I know. That's just absurd. Like, Fred and George, I mean, they're older, but, like, why would they know how to drive? Well, they've probably stolen the car before, to be honest. I guess so. And also it's a magic car, so it might not have so much, like, technical skills. (laughs) Stop and go. (laughs) Yeah, just... It's also so bizarre, though. Like, the car for the whole first bit that it's in is just a car. Oh, wait, is that in the movie or on the book where it comes back and, like... No, it's in both, yeah. Is in the forest and is yeah. like way more sentient. Like, yeah, it somehow transcends just being like a charmed <laughs> object and becomes yeah. like a part of the family. It's so weird. Which, like, I'm sure that, like, in the mechanics of magic, that is not how it works. Like, you've charmed no. it to do like a specific thing, there's no connection between it being able to fly and go invisible. And they're having, like, awareness. Yeah, that is just, like, impossible. Come on, JK Rowling. Come on. Um, oh, yeah, so the actual Chamber of Secrets shit. Yeah. There's also where they first ma- they make Polyjuice Potion. Oh, yeah, which comes up almost every book. So frequently. <laughs> It's like one of the only potions. It's like one of the main potions in the wizarding yeah. world, even though it's is it illegal? Um, they say it's illegal for them to make. Surely it's illegal, right? To like, I mean, I guess that's like fraud in our world. Yeah, impersonation. Know? Yeah. Oh, I like seeing your cat in the back. Oh yeah, he just came galloping in. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Cute. Yeah, it's pretty um, This is when we meet our first Creevy. Meet Colin Creevy. Oh, he's fucking annoying. He could have been he's killed so by the... Fucking annoying, eh? I reckon the Basilisk could have taken him out and, like, no one would have... That would have been way him. more better plot, eh? Bro, like, she really doesn't have the hang of killing people off, eh? Like, she doesn't kill off any annoying minor characters, and then at the end she just kind of kills off, like heaps of the favorite characters yeah i know it's really like weighted towards the last books where it could have been you know like the seriousness of the chamber of secrets opening could have been way more like pronounced yeah also i think like there could have been a bit more build up between that and like the fourth book or something like 
like people being like, oh no. Oh, I guess I mean like obviously no one no one knew about that Baltimore was doing it the first time, I guess. But still, I feel like people should have started yeah. to be like, oh shit, this could be a sign that he might come back kind of soon. Maybe. Yeah. Um is this this is the one where Hagrid gets sent to Azkaban, right? Yes. Which is fucking crazy. Which is before they set up all the shit about Azkaban and like the Dementors and shit. Like that yeah. shit hasn't doesn't exist yet. And so he's just like gets carted off to Azkaban and he yeah. comes back and he's like, Well that was a bit of shit. <laughs> really downplaying it. Maybe it doesn't affect giants as much. That happens quite a lot. Well, when they try to take him in the fifth one, they are like all these dudes stunning him, and he's like got fang, and he's like oh, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's like heaps of new stuff in this one. Eh, like the world gets so much bigger. They start like they do dueling club, which is when he finds out. He's a parcel mouth. Is he a parcel mouth and it's parcel tongue? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, he learns the famous Expelliarmus charm. Classic. Classic. Which ends up being like his signature move later on, which is like the lamest <laughs> shit ever. It's so funny, eh? I guess it like does make a lot of sense though. It's like oh, I'll just take your wand away (laughs) and you can't, like, do anything. Fuck you. Yeah, but he still does it with, like, Bellatrix Lestrange and shit. And it's like, if there's anyone you should try and take out a little bit more seriously, it's her. Yeah, but he also, like, in the fifth one, at the end of the fifth one, just after she's killed Sirius, he does try to um, um, Cruciatus her. And it's, like, not... But then she's like, ha, 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 you've never done that before. You need to really mean it. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> How embarrassing. <laughs> um, I always felt like it seemed like there should be more, like, consequence or, like, permanence of, Hermione accidentally like polyjuicing herself into a cat. Yeah, no one asks about that. <laughs> like she's in the hospital wing for weeks, and no one's like, "What are you doing?" What's up with that, bro? <laughs> <laughs> and like Harry's only got Ron to help him, who's like <laughs> not really getting anywhere. Bungle Ron. Yeah, but like. It doesn't even say what excuses she made to be like, oh, yeah, I just tried to turn into a cat. (laughs) Thought it'd be interesting. (laughs) Maybe it says something about about it, like, nah, I don't know. But everyone's like, oh, she's just so smart. She's just trying to go a little bit too far. Yeah, all they talk about is how she, like, still does all her homework. And Ron's like, crazy bitch <laughs> yeah i guess um, we like find out yeah i think i thought it was interesting to start finding out about like um tom riddle and like then you yeah. start to, it's like it totally sets up all the stuff in the sixth one where they're like where yeah. he's learning about the past like voldemort's past and shit well there's so much stuff like i was just reading the bit in the sixth one where they're like talking about Tom Riddle at Hogwarts and Harry's like oh but you never trusted him eh because he remembers that Tom says that in this one yeah the pesky transfiguration teacher Dumbledore yeah that's crazy young man and it was Jenny the whole time. Fucking Jenny. <laughs> Crazy bitch. 
So could anyone control the basilisk if they can use parcel tongues? I think it was like because she doesn't remember any of that happening. It's because Tom Riddle's possessing her. But like so using parcel tongue though to like Yeah, um, yeah, because no I haven't actually read the seventh book yet. But in the seventh one of the seventh movies, Ron gets into um the Chamber of Secrets without Harry because Harry speaks parcel tongue in his sleep. So Ron's like picked up on it and he's like, yes, 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 yes. and they get in, you know. Ooh. Yeah, that's quite weak, though, how the Chamber of Secrets is set up then, eh? Because, like, anyone who could do that. There must be some, like, linguists, like, wizarding linguists who, ha- like, have records of how to use parcel tongue. But it kind of seems like only the Slytherin bloodline can use it. Yeah, but that's... I don't think that's true. Because it's just a language, right? Well, but, like... The last people who could speak it. How does Tom Riddle know how to speak it? No, it's like inherited because, like, there's a bunch of stuff in the sixth one about how, like, his um, mother's family all speak yeah, it. They all speak it. But I would have thought, how can you be born with language? It's magic. Oh, right. <laughs> it's like, a, well, um, I think snakes are all born with their own ability to understand each other whatever way they do. <laughs> okay, I guess so. But, yeah, I don't know. You'd surely still be able to learn it. Yeah. Like other people could get into the Chamber of Secrets. But it's like, they almost imply that, oh no, nah, that's not true. But they kind of do imply that there's no one seen any parcel tongue since Voldemort. Yeah. They say that, don't they? But then that makes sense because there's no one else, you know, like... I can't remember her name. Voldemort's mum is the last gaunt. You know, the other two die. And then she dies and it's just Voldemort and he doesn't have any kids. But there must be other families who can, or just other people who have inherited it and shit. Yeah, I don't know. You could, like, explain that by saying that in all those other families it's become so diluted that they aren't born with it anymore. But the gaunts all married their cousins. They say they all married their cousins and that's why they're so lucky. But that's like assuming that it only comes from one place and that it's only been passed down one line. You know, like there must be some people in like France and Germany and shit. Who's like... The first first guy that could ever do it. (laughs) I don't know. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Also, I mean... I get it, maybe it's secretive or something, but why is it in a girl's bathroom? You know, like... Yeah. I don't know why Slytherin would put it there. Why was Slytherin (laughs) in the girl's bathroom making it in there? (laughs) Creepy guy. (laughs) Um, Slash, why? Maybe it was in a girl's bathroom, you know? It's on a tap, though. I know, but it could have been a boy's bathroom at a certain point, couldn't it? Yeah. Maybe but... they were woke and they just had unisex bathrooms back in the day. Maybe. <laughs> Wouldn't you want to have it somewhere that anyone, any either gender of your like descendants could access, not a gendered bathroom? It was never going to be a girl, Max. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Why isn't it just, like, in the dungeons anyway? Well, it is, but, like, it would be too obvious to have the entrance there. 
It's like underneath the dungeons, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, Voldemort found it in the girls' bathroom somehow. What was he doing there? <laughs> He's like a prefect. He's like inspecting the girls' bathroom or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> There's also you meet Fudge in this one. Oh yeah, that doesn't really go anywhere. Idiot. I mean, like he's important in a way. Yeah. But man, that shit with him later on is so frustrating. I just found all the one, all the fifth book is just like so frustrating to read. And the end of the fourth book where they have that first conversation after Cedric died and he just like yeah. outright refuses to believe it. Yeah. And he keeps being like, oh, you, you really believe this boy's like bullshit stories? It's like, what do you think? happened you know like what is your explanation for how Cedric just turned up dead yeah I don't know bro I don't know he's an idiot or an Aragog you mean yeah Aragog? yeah well like Hagrid's kind of backstory comes up too and that's kind of fucked up yeah. too like, I know there's no evidence I guess, like, they find Aragog in the school and they know it's Hagrid's, but, like, I don't know. But, Is like, that enough to expel him? No. And also, the, the attacks were, like, nothing to do with a spider. Yeah, but I think they just, like, don't know what the fuck is attacking which seems it's that's another one of those things right where like nobody seems to know it's a basilisk but hermione figures it out yes like she's 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean shouldn't like no one thinks oh this is like slytherin's thing maybe it's a snake something he could talk to and was, like, obsessed with. Yeah, or, like, someone that knows about, oh, if there's people being stunned, then it could be, like, a basilisk or some shit. Well, were the people being stunned the first time round? I think so, because I think they were looking at... I think there were a bunch of attacks before Myrtle, and they were already, like, trying to move towards shutting down the school if they couldn't stop them or some shit. Isn't that kind of what they say or imply? I think so. But again, it's just like, how is the snake stunning so many people? <laughs> like, for it to come out twice and both times just be like, there's water on the floor or like, they were using the camera. Yeah, if you... If a fucking giant snake popped up in front of you, the first thing you would do is look straight at it. Yeah. Just out of shock, you'd be like, what is that big thing, like, moving in my vision? Even oh. if you happen to be holding your camera, which Colin Creevy is most of the time, you'd still, like, be looking at it as you, like, bring the camera up, you know? Yeah, the only plausible explanation for that is Colin walks around with the camera already up to his eye, waiting to, like, take some photo of anything interesting that happens. Because otherwise what? it just doesn't make sense. He was, like, bringing it up and he hadn't quite got to the eyes yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so stupid. It's like, I don't know. Like, it's like a Medusa thing, right? But, like, she wasn't just, like, stunning people. Everybody got turned to stone, you know? Yeah, and the mirror allows him to see her and not be anything, not get stunned or anything. Um, who is it? Hercules or Achilles or... One of those guys. Some Perseus? shit. I don't know, one of those bitches. 
Um, um. Yeah, it's kind of like the thing with... Um, I mean, I guess it's stupid to criticise it because it is like a common plot device, but like, why other things protecting the Philosopher's Stone things that you can get through, you know? Like, yeah. if you want to, like, have some way of, like, just clearing out all the mudbloods, why <laughs> are you doing this thing that can fail so easily, you know? Well, also, like, yeah, surely if the snake was trying to get rid of mudbloods and you it stunned them, then you'd just kill it with your, like, big fat fangs, you know? Yeah, maybe they wanted to leave no trace or something. I don't know. There's like... Yeah, it could just eat them. Yeah. And there'd be no trace. Just, like, if you did enough damage, there wouldn't be evidence that it's like one fang bite from a snake, you know? Like, if I mean, if you fucked them up enough, they'd just be like meat at that point right and no one's gonna be like i guess it's a kid's book you're not looking to have your like antagonists turn them into mush yeah well then there wouldn't be much of a story they would have just closed the school <laughs> and then there would be no more chance for death that's either. so much shit, the way it's like well if you took the sensible route there's no story <laughs> He was pretty um, busy, like, Tom Riddle was, like, pretty busy while he was at school, though, eh? Yeah. Like, he was already, he already went off and killed his family, like, already unlocked the <laughs> Chamber of Secrets. Plus, he was, like, a star in, like, all his classes and the whole school. And yeah. And he, I think he also made a couple of Horcruxes while he was at school. I mean, at least one, obviously, right? Because, I mean, that diary had to have been made while he was at school. Otherwise, it wouldn't be school-aged him in it, right? Well, I'm not sure because, like, that that whole area is a bit murky. And also, it wasn't left in the school. He had it and he left it with Malfoy. I know, I just mean that for the image of him that's coming out of the Horcrux to be Hogwarts-aged Tom Riddle, surely that means the, like, bit of his soul that's in it had to have been Hogwarts-aged Tom Riddle, Well, right? I'm not sure about that, though, because, you know, last time we were talking about how, like, whether the, you know, the separate bits of soul are separate, you know, preservations of that time or if they're still connected. Because he um he knows about Harry Potter. Which could just be from Ginny. It does say that she's talked about Harry Potter because she is like in love with him. Yeah. But I don't know if he knows like, who Harry is from Ginny. But I guess it could be, like, I'd kind of assumed that he didn't know who Harry was. And then he's like, oh, tell me about Harry Potter. And she's like, oh, he's amazing. He, like, killed Lord Voldemort or the Dark Lord. He's, he's like, like, hey, that's me. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this joker? Well, I kind of think of it, you know, like this thing, like where when you split an atom and you put the pieces on either side of the world, they like gravitate back towards each other because they're still like one thing. Yeah. <laughs> I think of it like that, like they're in seven pieces and stored in different six objects and shit, but they're still kind of like interconnected. But then again, he doesn't know when they've destroyed them. So like, I guess they don't know what he's doing either, maybe. But in the sixth one, where they destroy the locket. Yeah. It does some other trippy, like, imagery, illusion kind of shit. But that's more like showing them, like, their worst fears, right? Uh, seventh one, sorry. Um, 
rather like that's more that like that seems more like a defensive tactic of like if I scare them enough they won't kill me you know yeah but it could be like showing her what she most wants to see which could be like a really cool handsome teenage boy not like a fucking old man him though? what does she see him though maybe not I don't, I don't think it says at least I don't you know remember her talking about seeing him because she I think she just writes in this diary and it writes back and then she keeps having these like blackouts you know okay also I think he made the um Ravenclaw Warcrux when he was at school because it's in the school right I feel like, and I haven't read the seventh one, but I feel like it says that he made that one when he comes back to the school and doesn't get the job. But do you really reckon he was, like, sneaking around right under Dumbledore's long, crooked nose? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I don't know. That's one of those, like... I I might even, you know, be wrong about that, but that's what I thought happens in the books. But then again, it's like, do you have to be making a Horcrux, like, immediately after you've killed someone? Or is it like you've killed someone so your soul inside of you is already broken up and then you can make a Horcrux whenever you want? I don't know it doesn't, it's not clear. So, like, you know, arguably, when he kills his dad, he then makes the diary or whatever. But then if he makes the diadem into a Horcrux while he's at Hogwarts, he doesn't kill anyone then, right? Well, he killed three people, though, with his dad. He killed his dad's, his grandparents, too. Oh, yeah. Have I don't know. I mean, I don't know. She should write some books from his perspective. I was thinking that. I thought, was that like Twilight did? You know, she wrote the book from Edward's perspective. Nah, that's bullshit. That's shit. I tried listening to it as an audiobook, and it was just like the worst thing I have ever listened to. And I just, like, was laughing so much I couldn't focus on what was going on. I was like, this is stupid. I'm not going there. Nah, not with it. But I thought it could be kind of cool to have, like, um, you know, like you were saying, like, his parents' um, stories and shit. Or, like, I was also thinking, like, um, other people who are at Hogwarts when he's not there, for example. Or, like, you know? Like... Kind of, mm. some kind of like even like just before he came like Fred and George at Hogwarts or like you know there could be some real like cool shit to play around with with that with the different characters I honestly just think that any of that would be really fun you know like the Weasleys Molly and Arthur at Hogwarts would be fun like you know who is it um in, I think it's in the sixth one when McGonagall is talking to Neville about what newts he's going to take. Yeah. And he's like, oh, just because your grandmother didn't pass her charms out, blah, 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 blah. Like, how old is McGonagall? I think she's probably in her 70s or something. Good question, actually. She must be nearly <laughs> as old as but Dumbledore. Buff Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> Because, I mean, he's been, she was, oh no, no, he wasn't the principal yet when, when uh, Tom Riddle was there. Yeah. Yeah. But then when he came back a while later, he was. But that was already when he was like starting to get big, which was like kind of only a few years before Harry was born, right? What do you mean one big? (laughs) (laughs) 
know, popular, <laughs> famous. <laughs> what? He does get me. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant, like, old. <laughs> no. What? He's, like, all grown up. He's big now. No. Anyway. <laughs> big. Um, yeah, how old is Dumbledore? He's, like, 120 or so. Oh, no, no, no. Um, Bastilda Bagshot is, like, 120 or some shit. And she's older than Dumbledore. Right. So he's not actually even that old. But it, there must be some kind of slippage because, like, there's, like, 50 years between um, Harry... No, Harry... Present-day Harry in the Chamber of Secrets and um, Hagrid getting kicked out of school. Yeah. So in that time, there has to be enough time for... You know, if you work backwards from Harry being at school, so, like, 12 years before that he was born, and then, say, like, five years before that his parents finished school, and then yeah. they were there for seven years, and then Arthur and Molly Weasley were there before that because they didn't overlap. And so, like, that's already, like nearly 40 years or something. Yeah. Depending on the how old they were when they had Harry, which we don't actually know. No, but you do know... No, I guess that doesn't help, does it? You know how old um, Lucius Malfoy is. Because it says in, like, maybe the third book or something, or the second book, it says he's 41. Yeah, yeah, because they think it was him that opened it the first time. Yeah. But he wasn't. And then they yet. find out he's like early 40s. And oh, yeah. they're like, oh, well, it can't be him. Yeah. But I guess you don't know. I, we don't know if who he went to school with. I think, yeah, because like. He maybe he's a bit younger than Harry's parents or something because, but he's also like, oh no, that doesn't really matter. Because they, his, Harry's parents were at school with Snape. Yeah, but not necessarily Lucius Malfoy. No, no, I just thought that, and then was like, there's a, there's actually no mention of that. Maybe they overlapped, but they... Yeah, that's weird. It's almost like Malfoy didn't exist back then. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> like, Just... they can't be that much older or younger than 41. Harry's parents? Yeah. No. Because you would think they were, like... I don't know. I guess it is just ambiguous, isn't it? They could they be early 20s when they had Harry and then they would be younger than Malfoy. They could be early 30s and then they'd be older than Malfoy, you know? I think they were still quite young when they had Harry, but then they had done some shit, right? Because they were in the Order of the Phoenix and shit. Yeah. How... I guess I thought that, um, like, Voldemort or Tom Riddle or whatever was younger when he, like, came to power. What was he doing for all well, he went after he finishes Hogwarts? Exploring the dark arts. I think you're about to go through all that stuff in the pensive, like, um, in Dumbledore's private lessons with Harry in the sixth one. Because, like, yeah. he... Um, he he finishes Hogwarts and then he immediately tries to get a job there. And they're like, yep. the headmaster at the time, which is not Dumbledore, d turns him down. But Dumbledore also like advised him pretty strongly to turn him down. But he was like, oh well, maybe maybe you're, when you're a bit older, you know. Yeah. But then he goes away, works at Borgen and Burks. 
Oh, yeah. And then he disappears for ages. So we don't actually know how long that is, really. But then he comes back after he disappears, and he's already got a like crew of Death Eaters. But then he's trying to... This is what I was getting at, actually. He comes back, and he's saying, like, I want to work here now. And Dumbledore's like, um, basically, like, no. Mm. And, like... At that time, he he knows everything about what D- Voldemort's doing. Like he knows that he came with like a crew of people, and that they're sitting yeah. in Hogshead, and he knows exactly who they are. And I kind of find like I would find it a bit unbelievable to think that he could um, sneak in and put the tiara, whatever it is, what's it called, diadem, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tiara <laughs> in. <laughs> the Chamber of Secrets yeah. at that time because, like, Dumbledore was, like, tracking him pretty hard. That's true. But then how... Maybe he took the diadem with him, you know, and then made it into a Horcrux and then brought it back. Well, maybe it wasn't at Hogwarts and he just brought it back. Oh, yeah. And mm. he, like, just took a little detour to the girls' bathroom <laughs> to <laughs> sneak it in there. No, to the room of requirement, isn't it? Oh, is that where it is? Yeah, because she, like, doesn't Harry find the um, Ravenclaw yeah. post? And she's yeah, like, I haven't I haven't quite got there yet. yet. Things are found or something. And he's like, oh. He oh finds God. her what? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, yeah, we're it's not going to go there. requirement okay. where, like, people just put random shit. Ah, uh, so maybe he's, like, um... And which, the river requirement is, like, on the way to Dumbledore's office, right? Yes, because there's a bit where Harry's going to Dumbledore's office and he bumps into Professor Trelawney, who's trying to, like, hide her sherry bottles in there. <laughs> It's so funny how, like, every time, you know, like, in the fifth one, it's established that she's, like, started drinking sherry all the time. And he's, like, she always feels like sherry. And then in the sixth one, every time he meets her again, he's, like, fuck, she feels like sherry. It's like, yeah, and she keeps dropping, like, um... She's an alcoholic. Like, um, derogatory comments about the centaur. yeah. Like yeah, calling she... him like a nag and shit. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know about the timelines. I, I don't think it's not very really clear. It would have to be like he left school for a few years, let's say five, and then in that time, Dumbledore became the headmaster and McGonagall became the transfiguration teacher. Yeah, but then like, so she must be older than Voldemort. Day. So that would then be like 40 years ago or something from like Harry Potter time, right? Yeah, maybe 40 or 45. Oh, yeah, probably 40, yeah. Yeah. So then... I don't know what, there's 11 years of Harry's the you know like the non-war times and then it says it was like the darkest nine years of everyone's lives so it's been like 20 years so it was like late 30s when he came to power that would kind of make yeah where's all that time going what's he up to <laughs> I don't know yeah I kind of assumed it was quicker than that or something. Anyway. Um, yeah, this is also, I guess, like, this book for the setting up all the, like, he's got part of Voldemort inside of him stuff, you know? Does it? Yeah. Because he's, like, the heir of Slytherin, right? Oh, right, and he can do parcel time and shit. Yeah, that... 
Dumbledore tells him that right at the end of the second one. What? These that the reason, <laughs> huh? That the reason he's past Little Mouse is because of the whole the, the scar. Oh yeah. Shit. He says he's like, oh, I think when Voldemort tried to kill you, he transferred some of his powers to you, or something. Yeah, some of his abilities. Mm. Um. Yeah. But that also kind of was set up in the first one too, because when he sees Voldemort, like in the forest, and then in the at the end, his scar is like burning and shit. Mm. So it's kind of like the connection is like set up there. Yeah. And it, um. Yeah. Neville Longbottom in the Chamber of Secrets. (laughs) (laughs) Can't believe she named him Longbottom, eh? That's so on the nose. (laughs) I saw this like slam poetry thing by uh, um... Anyway. Um, about Cho Chang and like how like finally there's like an Asian character in a major series but like her name's Cho Chang and like they're both surnames (laughs) like Cho and Chang are both surnames (laughs) and like they're not even Chinese and like I don't know (laughs) that kind of shit I mean a lot of the names are kind of ridiculous Oh, yeah. A lot of the names are so, like, derivative, you know? Even, like, Snape. You know, like, Severus Snape? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a combination between snake and rape. (laughs) 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 Yeah, it said that... I actually read the kind of, like... um, the Wikipedia page about Harry Potter a while ago and then it's like got a section on literary style which I think is a stretch but like yeah it says that like a lot of the names are like onomatopoeia yeah when like Trelawney's first name is Sybil who is like an oracle of Delphi you know oh like okay um yeah, that's about it of this book. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Oh, Moaning Myrtle. Oh, yeah. Bro, she lives in the U bend of the toilet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't really retain that the first time around. And then in the movie, she's like, goes back into the toilet. And then she says something about hanging out in the U bend. I was like, that's not real. And in the book, she is. It says she it says a bunch of times that she's like living in her usual U bend. I'm like, what the fuck? Why is she choosing to live in the toilet? She's going to have know, just some right? shit flush through her every day. <laughs> what also, she says that. I can't remember what book it's in. Maybe it's in the fourth one when she's, like, having a bath with Harry. But she says something about how she, like, tried to go haunt one of the girls who was mean to her or some shit. And then, like, she died. So she just came back to Hogwarts to live in the (laughs) (laughs) U-Bend. But also, like... Does it mean, though, that the ghosts can, like, exist wherever they want and they've I don't know, they're deciding to live at Hogwarts all the time. I don't know. That's. I mean, obviously they didn't all die at Hogwarts. No. I actually also thought, like, they must have all gone to Hogwarts, right? All the ghosts. 
I guess so. Because they all have a house. Like, Nick is, like, part of Gryffindor and shit. Maybe they get sorted once they come there. (laughs) (laughs) I doubt it. But also, bro, this is pretty fucking weird, though, because, like, nearly headless Nick goes on about how, like, his neck was, like, hacked, like, 90 times or whatever with a blunt axe. Yeah. What was he doing being <laughs> beheaded with an axe? Like, who was fucking him up with an axe? He's a, he's a wizard. Well, I was just going to say, there isn't actually, I don't think, any indication that any of them, like, carry... It's not like they have ghostly wands or anything. Maybe they weren't wizards, but they're ghosts, so they no. just joined the world then. No, after Sirius dies, <laughs> Harry goes and asks Nick about what happens when you die. And he's like, yeah. some wizards can choose to come back. You're right. You are right. I don't know. He's just dying. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> what was that? He's just an idiot who let someone hack him to bits then. I don't know, his wand rolled away. <laughs> he should have, like, expelliarmus to the axe or something. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I know it doesn't go into detail about the kind of, like, lore of ghosts and shit, but, like, I don't see how she fits in the u She, like, purposefully transforms into the shape and size of the U-Bit. No, she's like the same shape and size as she normally is. She just like <laughs> centralizes around the u The u in her then. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't understand what Peeves is. Neither. <laughs> they say he's not a ghost. So is then he just, like, visually just a man? Like, floating around their halls and shit? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Who says he's not a ghost? I think they say it in the first one. Maybe they're wrong. (laughs) Maybe they are. (laughs) Because he obviously, like, floats through stuff like a ghost would. Maybe that's never happened. Maybe I've imagined that. Also, it's quite ambiguous whether or not they can, like, touch or affect matter. Because obviously they can go through walls and shit. But, like, there's some bits, like, where... There's, like, a bit where Myrtle, like, flies back... (laughs) Flies back into the toilet and, like, splashes water everywhere. (laughs) But it's like, well, so what? They can just touch shit now. But there's, like, a bit, too, where, like, they can't touch shit. They, like, it... It says somewhere that, like, you know, they can't do that shit. Well, they can't touch people because that's one of the things that she always describes in exactly the same way of, like, they'll touch them or walk through them and she's like, oh, it feels like you've had a bucket of cold water thrown over you or some shit, you know? Yeah, but at the... But Peeves can touch things, which is why he's not a ghost. (laughs) But, like, um... Obviously, there's instances of ghosts touching things, though. Why? When? Well, Myrtle splashes the water. Yeah, I guess that's one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's not enough of that, like, world building, you know? No. There's those things. It's like a weird, like, assemblage of kind of folklore from different places yeah when sometimes things just happen for the convenience of what's happening then you know well i don't agree with that no neither (laughs) i'm just saying (laughs) i think she should have done it differently (laughs) it's better in the books obviously like there's all these bits in the movies there's one of the movies that starts with like the camera coming into harry at the Dursleys, and he's using Lumos to read his wizarding books. No, he's not. He is. Nah, he doesn't. Nah, I'm pretty sure he's got a torch 
He's got a flashlight. No. no. In the books, I'm certain he has a flashlight. A torch. It's called a torch. But in the movie, there's a bit where he says Lumos and it goes a little bit and then he says Lumos and it goes brighter and then the whole screen (laughs) goes white and you, like, have the title sequence or something. I'm so sure. Oh, in the movie he uses Lumos. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's just... We don't care about that. I know. I'm just saying at least the books are a little bit better than that nonsense where they're just like, wouldn't it be fun to do magic? You know, after he blows up on, what's her name? I wanted to say Aunt Bertha, but that's that picture book that we had. Yeah, I wanted to say Aunt Muriel, but that's Ron's aunt. Yeah. Anyway, (laughs) blows up his auntie. There's something wrong with the bitch. There's something wrong with the pub. (laughs) Um, Yeah. (laughs) Um... But then he runs away and he's using Lumos out on the street. And that's Is how the any- night that's how the night bus comes to pick him up because he like raises his wand to try and see Sirius. Oh yeah. Isn't there a bit where he says though he's like, Well, I've already blown up my aunt. I might as well. Yeah, but then they just let it go. Yeah, but that's when Fudge is real like pro Harry, you know? And yeah. Harry yeah. thinks he's there to expel him. And he's like, oh, we don't expel kids for blowing up their aunts. No, but he didn't just do that. But yeah, no, whatever. He's like, they're more worried about catching Sirius than catching Harry at that point. <laughs> yeah, but also like, if the Minister for Magic says that to you, you're not going to be like, oh, but I also did Lumos, sir. <laughs> like, <laughs> He would. He fucking always says shit like that. <laughs> He's such a dweeb, eh? Yeah, actually, <laughs> the underage magic thing, I think in the fourth one, I was like, why are they not all just doing magic? Because, like, there's no way anyone would know who's doing magic at the World Cup. Yeah, right. They should just be doing that. There. Yeah. He doesn't I even have it anyway. Um, all right. All right. Well, I think that's about enough of that. <laughs> Um, any major things that we haven't covered? Not really. Not that I can think of, you know. Oh, he frees Dobby at the end. Yeah. Quite artfully, I think. Huh? Quite artfully. Yeah. And it's pretty sweet. It's like a really nice moment, you know, forging a friendship for the next few years. years. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and kind of setting up for all the spew stuff yeah in advance oh no not really actually that's that's from that other L anyway <laughs> yeah um yeah cool cool that was cool nice and um good yarn huh I said good yarn yeah mate and um, stay tuned next time for the Prisoner of X Kakaban. <laughs> the only one without Voldemort. Yeah, the only one with the only break we get from Voldemort. <laughs> but I mean, it kind of is still about Voldemort. Yeah, I mean, like, it's still Voldemort adjacent, but he's not like there, you know? Yeah. Okay. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Hey, guys. Uh, you can find Max, a builder and entrepreneur based in Japan, and Sister Sylvia, a farmer, Nita Dana, based in Hawke's Bay, New Zealand. All right. Check them out. Thanks for listening. Thanks. See ya. Ah!